We've had several new uh, sets of guidelines, if you will, come, starting a couple of years ago with the Hawk Consistence that was published by Marco Ciccardi and the group in January of this year, as well as a WAO uh, consensus and uh, more recently our own ICON consensus. All of these documents point to the need to better and earlier diagnose patients to provide treatment for them, either well, both on demand for all patients that are diagnosed and prophylactic therapy for patients who uh, are more severely affected by the disease or for whom on-demand therapy doesn't do the trick. All of these documents are, are similar and they basically reinforce and build on, on each other. Uh, basically saying that everybody who has HAE and has attacks, those attacks are eligible for therapy that attacks should be treated earlier as opposed to later, and then if attacks are not well controlled, then prophylaxis should be considered. For the hereditary angioedema type 1 and type 2, the individuals that have uh, dysfunctional C1 inhibitor or deficient C1 inhibitor, the guidelines are fairly thorough, and, and fortunately we have medications to address the guidelines and therapy for these patients. For the what used to be known as type 3 hereditary angioedema, recently renamed hereditary angioedema with normal C1 inhibitor, there's still a lot of work to do. We, we, we have only case reports on therapies for those patients. Uh, they're probably rare enough that putting together a clinical trial to see which one of these therapies is going to be the best for them may be difficult, but there's still a lot of work to be done in that particular area of hereditary angioedema. Well, every patient needs to have a, a plan. We sort of call it an action plan similar to the asthma action plan for our patients that have asthma. Uh, and that should include, one, access to an on-demand therapy, preferably one that can be self-administered or administered at least in the home. Uh, the problems with getting treatment in a hospital or in an emergency department is difficult for patients. And unless that's prearranged, it's, it's, a, it's a disaster often for them. So, on-demand treatment access, preferably self-administered. Then a way to monitor the attacks. How do you respond to therapy? What attacks are you having? Sort of a, a registry, a, a picture of what the patient's particular uh, disease, if you will, activity looks like. And once we have that data, then we can better plan for the patient. We know and we tell all our patients that laryngeal attacks can be fatal. And, and if they should have swelling in their airway, swelling in their tongue, even swelling in their face, that they can go ahead and treat themselves, but they should go then to a medical facility where they can uh, get further therapy or airway support if they need it. I think where we need to expand our efforts, if not research, is in getting the word out further to the general physician population about this disease. Uh, we've focused on this disease for four or five years in the allergy community and we're just now beginning to get the word out to family practitioners, internists, pediatricians, and emergency room doctors. Those are the people that see these folks first and if they don't know about the disease there's no way that they can diagnose it. So I think that that's the biggest unmet need. Patients are still waiting years to get a proper diagnosis and that's happening because patients or the patients' physicians just don't know about hereditary angioedema.